All right, this next one here, uh, we're talking about a student used this graph 5 times 1.012 raised to x to show how the balance in his savings account will increase over time. What does the 5.0 represent in this situation? So right away, I notice here fx is kind of like y. This is like one of your equations where it's y. It has something that you're multiplying together, but then that thing you're multiplying by is being raised by something. So I already kind of automatically know this is a growth, or you could even say a decay type of situation. Something is growing or decaying, and we say exponentially when this happens. Okay, so we have the different pieces here. So our A, in this case, is the 5. The B is the 1.012. And then the x, typically like that, in this case, is going to be like our time, like how, how many years, right? So it increases over time right there. And then y is just, I guess you could say it's just like your final amount or whatever. So we have a couple different things here. So the a, what I want you to write next to this, this is your initial amount. You, you know, if you start out with that, then you're going to take that number and actually multiply it multiple times with your exponent there. So... A is the initial, okay, the B value is either your growth or sometimes we'll even say decay depending on what's happening, uh, factor I guess, the growth or decay factor. What are you multiplying by each time? Okay, sometimes if it's a, a number bigger than one that means it's growing, if it is less than not one uh, that means it's decaying, and I think we see an example in here in the next few problems where we have a decay situation. And then you got X is the amount of time there. So they're asking what's a 5.0. It's got to be the initial, initial amount, so it's got to be the starting balance right there. Um, so the other options are going to work out the interest savings account earned for the first year right there. Well, if, if we wanted to figure out what was going on at the first year, we would need to replace that uh, X with a 1, so definitely not that. The annual interest rate of the savings account, that's actually not the interest rate. The interest rate has to deal with this number here. And actually to find it, you need to, this is kind of like a percentage right here. This is 100%, uh, here let me write it on the right line there, 100% is kind of like saying 1.00 and then however many decimals you go out. So actually this 12 right there, that 0 0.012 is kind of dealing with your interest rate right there. So that means your interest rate is, I think, 1.2% right there. Okay, but anyways, regardless, it's not that answer right there. And then C is the number of years of savings account. So the number of years the savings account has earned interest right there. And that would have to deal with like X right there. That's dealing with the time. So obviously not C. So D is your best option. All right. Next one here, this one's pretty straightforward. The graph of the function uh, is shown on the grid, which order pair represents the location of the y-intercept. So if we're looking here at this graph, the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis right here. So the graph crosses the y-axis. It looks like right around right there. Uh, so that looks at like down two units right there. And that order pair that pairs up with that, that's 0, comma, negative 2. So it's got to be G. Okay. Be careful. Some people might think, oh, the y-intercept, uh, they might get it switched with the x-intercept. The x-intercept looks like it's you know kind of between 1 and uh, 0, so it could be 1 third right there. So we're not going to choose any of those. Someone might accidentally choose J because they're thinking of, they might switch the order on accident of your x and y values there. So be careful. J kind of looks like a good one there, but G is the best one because it's on the y-axis. So that one's pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot to discuss there. This one right here, writing an equation, or uh, what they sometimes call a function rule. Uh, researchers in Antarctica discovered a warm sea current under a glacier that is causing the glacier to melt. The ice shelf of the glacier has a thickness of approximately 100, uh, or 450 meters. Uh, when it was first discovered, the thickness of the ice shelf is increasing at an average rate of 0.06 meters per day. 
right, function that can be used to uh, find the thickness, the ice shelf in meters, and uh, X days since the discovery. So if you look at all that stuff, we need to think about what are we starting at, which is 450 in this case, and then what are we going up or down by, which in this case we're going down by 0.06. So now, okay, start out at 450, and then we're subtracting 0.06. Now it's 0 0.06 per day, so I guess we're going to put a little X there, since that'll happen multiple times right there. And obviously that's got to be answer A right there, in that case. Uh, now as far as some of the other options goes, um, C might be tempting because you might accidentally you know, put the plus 0 0.06 instead of the minus. And I know it's minus because it's going down. It's getting smaller. It's, I guess, melting, and the thickness is going down. Be careful on C. Um, I guess B and D kind of incorporate the same numbers, but not really in the format that we're looking for there. Um, so be careful, I guess, on those. Yeah, I'm not really sure why someone would choose those versus A or C. So yeah, that's about it there. All right, 34. What is the positive solution to the equation 0 equals 1 third x squared minus 3? Now, if you go check out my little document that I made here, and I'll probably link it in the YouTube videos, or it'll be in the Google Drive folder, wherever you, however you're watching this, um, we talk about the four different ways to solve what we call quadratics when you have an x squared. And one of those ways is looking for the x-intercepts. So look for your x-intercepts of the graph if we had this thing equal to y. So we're going to type y equals one third x squared minus three right there and then we're going to see which one of the uh, x intercepts i guess is asking for the positive solution so that maybe there's going to be two solutions i'm not sure so i'm going to look for the x intercept wherever the x intercept is that's the number that will make that work out there so i'm going to go to my graphing calculator up and slide this down here if it'll let me and then, yep, go to y equals. We'll go one third x. Uh, if you want to type in a fraction, you can hit the alpha y equals button, or you can just put parentheses like this. So we'll go y equals one third x. Oh, I'm sorry too. If you're not sure how I got to this screen, you can just hit the top left button as y equals, and that gets you ready to go for graphing. So right now we got one third x, and then we're gonna put x squared, so I'll put that there, and then what else do we have? Minus 3. And let's see what happens here when we graph. I'm not sure why this is coming up over here, but yeah, there we go. So we are looking for these x-intercepts. Now it looks like it crosses there at 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0, and they're asking for the solution when it cross the, the, the positive solution. So this is your positive side right here. So it looks like three comma zero is gonna be the winner. If you're not sure too, we can go look at the table to make sure it's not some decimal that's really close. There's a lot of decimals here, but check this out. There's three comma zero. That means that x-intercept is a solution right there. Right. If you want, trying to drag this thing up here oh there we go okay so if you want to double check we can also plug in three because apparently that's our solution we can plug in three for the x and then see if it works out so that'd be three squared and then minus whoops three kind of doing some of the math in my head there so uh, three squared you'd have to take care of exponents first so that'd be nine one third of nine and then minus three right there so what is that, uh, 3 minus 3, which is 0, which is what we wanted to get. So that means x equals 3 is your answer there. And I guess it's one of those ones where you bubble, so you just go and bubble in the 3, fill in all the stuff there. All right, now this one, uh, this last one here, uh, it's dealing with another growth or decay situation here. The amount of fertilizer in the landscape and company's warehouse decreases at a rate of 3% per week. Right there, the amount of fertilizer uh, in the warehouse was originally uh, 78,000 cubic yards, which of the function models the amount of fertilizer in cubic yards left after W weeks. Okay, so this is just like that previous one that we did. I already forgot what number it was. 
was the first one, I think, right? Yeah, so this is just like 31. Instead of growing, we're decaying. We're going down by 3% each week. So we need this to be in the format A times B raised to X. Okay, and if you uh, just skipped ahead to 35, you might want to go watch 31. These two are pretty similar. Remember, A is the initial amount. So that thing that we're multiplying by first needs to be the initial amount. So we'll put 78,000 first. And then we're going to put times whatever the growth factor. Now, here they tell us the growth, or I'm sorry, the, the um, decay actually decreases at a rate of 3%. Now, we need to think about here. We're starting at 100% and we're decreasing by 3%. So I need to take those and subtract them. So that means we have 97% of our original amount. Now, to write an equation with that, usually we don't leave percentages, so we change these things to decimals. So that would be 0.97 right there. That's what we're going to multiply the 78,000 by the first time. And then you multiply whatever that answer is by 0.97 again. You do that multiple times. You multiply by 0.97 multiple times. And another thing for multiple times, repeated multiplication, we use an exponent for that. So that would be your equation. You can set it equal to F, or I'm sorry, Y, but they use F here. So F of W equals that stuff right there. So I think the best option here is going to be C. Now, as far as if you don't know which one or like what the A and B represent, you might get them backwards. So it looks like these two here, you get them. You get your A and B backwards, so be kind of careful on that. B, they um, used 1.03, so I think that would be if they added the two percentages together. So B is adding the percentages and they're backwards. Uh, D, be careful, D is really close because they take it and they add the percentage right there. So they have everything in the right spots, they just didn't use the right um, numbers right there. I guess 1.03 would make this number get larger right there. So it mean it would grow. But if we're doing 97% right there, that'd make it go down right there. So C is the best answer in this case. I believe that is it.